Hi, I want to talk about miscarriage. Miscarriage. You're familiar with the time, right? You've heard about it, or unfortunately, someone close to you or yourself you've experienced miscarriage. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go. What are the possible definitions that will come about in the course of this presentation? You will hear words like miscarriage, or blighted womb, or mixed abortion. In other words, this is a spontaneous abortion that happened without any external intervention. Miscarriage happens not because the doctor or nurse deliberately did anything to get out the baby before time. No. It's just like that, and that's why it's called spontaneous abortion. Some define um, miscarriage as early pregnancy loss, and that is accurate because it is known to be a, a kind of abortion that occurs on its own between the first week of pregnancy to the 20th week of pregnancy. And at that stage, the pregnancy is termed to be non-viable. In other words, the products of conception cannot survive on its own once it's out of the womb at that stage. But if it occurs anything greater than 20 weeks, it is time still birth. Still birth if it is greater than 20 weeks. There are other times like threatening abortion, and in that case, there will be bleeding for the private part of the woman. The, when the ultrasound is done, the service will be closed. And the ultrasound will reveal fetal activity, indicating that the pregnancy is viable, is healthy. So what we do at that stage is we advise the woman to rest and continue to monitor the level of the bleeding, watch out for pain, watch out for the characteristics of discharge, and then the fetal activities and the well-being of the mother also. It's threatened, but not occurring yet. Inevitable from the simple English word, it means this has come to an end. Because the service will be open, products of conception could even be viewed, there's bleeding and pain, and there's nothing we can do at this stage, the pregnancy will end. Incomplete abortion, the service is open, part of the product of conception would have come out already. Some still retain, that is why it's called incomplete. And complete abortion when the entire product of conception is out. And the ultrasound will reveal a very clean and empty uterus. Missed abortion. Well, at this stage, the fetus is dead, but every product of conception is still intact within the uterus. Little or no vaginal bleeding will occur. The woman may notice some stuff in her that uh, we warrant the doctor to carry out Ultrasound and that will show no fetal activity, but everything will be intact there. The common complication in early pregnancy is miscarriage. Unfortunately, the woman will become depressed, sad, and I can understand, and everybody can understand with her because she and the partner really want this pregnancy, they are not calling for abortion, it's not induced, 
but it does occur naturally. What are the possible risk factors here? Increase age. When a pregnant woman is greater than 35 years old, there's likelihood of chromosomal abnormalities. And chromosomal abnormalities are associated with early pregnancy loss. Reoccurrence of early pregnancy loss is another risk factor. Once a woman had miscarriage, it's very likely that she will have miscarriage again. There is possibility of submucosa on trimural fibroid, and that will not allow the pregnancy to thrive within. Subchorionic hematoma will lead to miscarriage if less than nine weeks old. And miscarriage is very common among blacks. Lead and arsenic poison could also aid that possibility. Pollutants that can cause cell death and altering growth factors of normal tissue will all cause it. Ionizing radiation, medications like misoprostol will increase intrauterine contraction, and that will force the product of conception out. So if by mistake or accident, inadvertently, or as you may choose your grammar, the woman takes misoprostol, we might get to the end of that pregnancy. Ibuprofen and aclofenac may also increase early pregnancy loss. Check with your doctor before you start taking that non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug, please. Heavy smoke, please. Once you're pregnant, it's time to seek smoking cessation. Caving heavily or alcohol, intrauterine device that is not having pregnancy on top of it can come down with spontaneous abortion. Thrombophilia is a kind of bleeding disorder will help particularly with accumulation of blood at the coronic level, coronic hematoma. Stress, increased stress will lead to possible spontaneous abortion, particularly in a chronic form of stress. I'm not talking about stress for five, 10 minutes, or you know, just a few minutes, no. But when a woman is subjected to continuous stress on a daily basis or repeatedly within a week, a month, and she's pregnant, early part of the pregnancy, well, there's that likelihood of spontaneous abortion. Increased cortisol levels and decrease in immunity will also aid spontaneous abortion. Increased susceptibility to infection. Acute stress may give threatening abortion, but when it is repeated, then there is a possibility of a complete loss. Hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So it is necessary to do thyroid stimulating hormone and assist as is appropriate. Pregnancy with infection, touch, toxoplasmosis, rubella, cytomegalovirus, and herpes. And of course, parvovirus B19 infection can lead to spontaneous abortion. Diabetes and obesity as well. Etiology. The common cause of early pregnancy loss or miscarriage, or whatever definition you give it, is chromosomal anomalies. In fact, we were taught in those days that a woman with frequent fetal loss or fetal wastage is likely having chromosomal anomaly. And up to today, 
men in literature in medical fields still agree with that notion that chromosomal anomalies will account for the largest proportion of causes of loss of pregnancy at the early part of the pregnancy. Maternal anatomy uh, that is distorted in any way, either because there's fibroid or polyps or scepter, or there is fusion or adhesion of the uterine wall called Asherman syndrome, will also lead to that. In addition to that, there's possibility of cervical incompetency because the service is not expected to open, supposed to close until when the woman will be getting ready to deliver. But in some women, naturally, the service is persistently open or just weak, can't hold the pregnancy, then we call that cervical incompetency and there's the possibility of fetal wastage in them. Surgical repairs will prevent future miscarriage in the second category that I've just mentioned. That is, if the cervix is repaired in cervical incompetency at gestational age of 16 week, then the fetus will be able to grow you know, to time and the Shirotka or McDonald's suture be removed at time and expect the labor on site and have a peaceful delivery. And if it is a case of polyps or fibroids, appropriate surgery like myomectomy could be embarked upon and the woman be pregnant after. If it is trauma, trauma could be from abuse at home, could be road traffic accident, could be as a result of fall then it should be attended to appropriately. And that could be a serious issue because domestic abuse could repeat itself and the woman will become one of those on the list of women that are having frequent fetal loss or fetal wastage. Decrease progesterone level. Progesterone is expected to be rising after fertilization so as to allow blastocyst implantation into the uterus. So when the level is low, then the function of progesterone may be lost. And progesterone functions mainly in pregnancy to hold the pregnancy in the uterus. Medication or implantation, but when that is lost, there's possibility of spontaneous uterine contraction, and that will force the product of conception out in form of complete or incomplete abortion because progesterone is responsible for smooth muscle realization, including that of uterus. We expect the level of progesterone to be high until term and at time to start dropping, and when the level of progesterone is dropping, that of oxytocin will be increasing, causing uterine contraction and releasing the content of the conception, that is the fetus and placenta. What are the clinical features? Bleeding. Bleeding. And Pregnancy test will be positive. There is going to be abdominal pain in many. Clot or tissues will be expelled depending on whether it is complete or incomplete abortion. Asymptomatic in mixed abortion. In mixed abortion, no symptom. There will be complete passage of the entire product of conception in complete abortion and retained tissue in incomplete abortion. But the retained tissue will lead to another problem called disseminated intravascular coagulopathy because that will mop up the clotting 
profile when there's massive bleeding there'll be anemia and the individual will become pale there'll be increased heart rates dizziness fainting decreased urine production or none that is oliguria or anuria what are the investigations to be carried out ultrasound ultrasound will tell us whether there's gestational sac and whether there's fetal activity in the uterus or not and many other things if it is threatened inevitable complete or incomplete physical examination using the speculum complete blood counts to know the level of anemia right now or possible infection if there's raised white blood count electrolytes and pregnancy tests and we can test progesterone level to be sure there's no decreased level of progesterone group and cross match if it is massive bleeding because there might be need for transfusion soon results and blood grouping is necessary because if the tumor is results negative and the potential father is results positive and the baby is results positive we need to give rogan right now we do renal function test and liver function test and of course thyroid function test what are the possible differential diagnoses here it could be ectopic pregnancy it could be threatening abortion it could be a dirty for mole h mole might be bleeding from vulva laceration or cervical laceration the bleeding from this woman might even be bladder carcinoma, hemorrhoids, or anorectal carcinoma. Treatment. The treatment is individualized, and that is based on the presentation or the severity of bleeding or the gestational age at presentation. And it depends on what the doctor has picked during the history, physical examination, and outcome of investigations. So, we we'll discuss the prognosis with the woman and the partner as she may choose to. She has the control over what she's carrying within her womb. The woman has the control over the fetus. But it's likely we're going to choose from some of these scenarios. It's likely we're going to involve the services of experts in genetics if chromosomal anomaly is suspected. Psychotherapists or police may be involved in case of trauma as a result of domestic abuse. If we have detected and confirmed cervical incompetency, referral to gynecologist will be necessary for cervical cerclage. Can give intravenous fluid if there's massive bleeding and the woman is hemodynamically unstable. Rogan, if this woman is resource negative, and the potential further is resource positive and you are envisaging that the features could have been resource positive then we give Rogan right now dilatation and current touch if it is incomplete abortion or you induce the labor after amniotomy as the case may be, particularly in means abortion. Part of the treatment is to do nothing if it is a complete abortion and there is no symptom or the ultrasound has also confirmed the same. So do nothing. Advice to have uterine anomalies corrected 
like myomectomy in case of fibroid or adizolysis in case of Ashman syndrome. Blood transfusion if severe bleeding and metotrexid with misoprostol depending on the age of presentation and its the practice at your center. In other words, your center's protocol. There are many new medications on the market right now that could be used in the first seven weeks. It depends on your center. Replace electrolyte as may be appropriate. If disseminated intravascular coagulopathy is present, treat appropriately. Infection could be tackled with appropriate antibiotics. And of course, give progesterone after due consultation with a gynecologist in case of women with low progesterone that is responsible for the spontaneous abortion. In conclusion, we can only prevent what is preventable. If the risk factors are known and prevented, the rate of miscarriage will drop. Wishing all pregnant women a peaceful gestation and delivery. Thank you for listening to my presentation kindly. Subscribe so that you can get this as soon as they're published. I appreciate it.